PTR audio gate sparks big fight. Both of them suddenly realized they made more money over here than they had ever in their lives. Anna Malai reignites corruption attack. Corruption will be the single biggest issue in Tamil Nadu, which has to be debated at the public forum. DMK goes mute on audio gate. Stalin corruption saga, top focus on 6 p.m. Prime. Good evening, you're watching 6 p.m. Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita Nandagopal and this evening we're going to be talking about the big political showdown playing out in Tamil Nadu over the DMK files released by the BJP. And following that, a purported audio clip of Tamil Nadu Minister Parnivel Tyagarajan where he's exposing the corruption of Udainidhi Stalin and as well as Stalin's son-in-law. We're getting you an exclusive conversation with the Tamil Nadu BJP chief Anamala in just a bit. Let's begin with the headlines. Surveillance choppers deployed after five army men are killed in Jammu and Kashmir terror attack. Intel sources say five terrorists, of which three were foreigners, were behind attack. Search operations underway. Prime Minister Modi chairs high-level meet on Sudan conflict. Prime Minister asks for a contingency evacuation plan to be readied. Emphasis on close communication with Sudan's neighbour nations. Pro-Atik chants in Patna after Friday prayer slogans raised against Prime Minister Modi and UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath by locals. Big update in Umesh Pal murder case. Atik's wife Shaista may surrender. Hunt for Atik's wife and top aide Gudu Muslim intensifies. Injured after suspended lawyer opens fire in Delhi circuit court, accused arrested Kejriwal questions LGO law and order situation. And Twitter removes legacy verified blue ticks from all accounts. Rahul Gandhi, UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, Shah Rukh Khan, Virat Kohli, everyone's lost their blue ticks. Only paid verified ticks here on. Let's begin with tragic news that's coming in right now from Chennai, from IIT Madras in the campus where another student has allegedly died by suicide. A second year BTEC student has in fact uh, been found dead. Uh, this particular student was found hanging in the Kaveri hostel of the IIT campus. Koturpuram police have now initiated an investigation. Further probe is underway. This comes in fact as the fourth reported suicide this year alone in the IIT Madras campus and that's why it's rung off alarm bells of what's going wrong within the campus. Just in fact, a few weeks ago, you had a PhD student of IIT Madras who died by suicide in his room in Velicheri on March 31st. Pramod Madhav is joining us with more details on this heartbreaking news, Pramod, because this is the fourth suicide that's been reported in the IIT Madras campus since the start of this year. That's in three months, four suicides. Absolutely, Chita. It's extremely tragic that we have to report this news. And this student's name is, uh, he is from Madhya Pradesh and his name is uh, Kedar. Uh, he's apparently studying second year B.Tech and he was living in Kaveri Hostel. As we know, uh, police sources claim that it was his student, I mean his friends, who alerted the police after he did not open the door for a very long period. Police had to break open the door and they found him hanging from the ceiling. Now, Kotrupuram police have initiated an investigation. However, just a few days back, IIT Madras went ahead and they initiated a well welfareness program for the students to study in peace and harmony because every time such a case comes out, it was said that the student was going under, through the, undergoing some kind of depression. But unfortunately, this is the fourth case for the year, which means it has to be thoroughly investigated for the sake of the student's life, Sachita. Very true, very, very true. And we'll track the latest that comes in on this. But obviously, there's a larger question to be asked here about why we're seeing this kind of suicides being reported in IIT Madras. There have been questions raised before about caste discrimination that's been ruled out by authorities. But is this 
pressure on students from teachers? Is this performance pressure on students? We'll track the latest on this. Thanks, Pramod, for joining us with those details. I want to switch focus now to the other big story from Tamil Nadu. This is on the DMK versus BJP showdown over the BJP's expose, as they've called it. They've termed it the DMK files. This was released by the Tamil Nadu BJP chief Annamalai six days ago. And since then, in another big development, the BJP has released an audio clip purportedly of the Tamil Nadu finance minister, Palnimet Tyagarajan, where in fact he speaks about Udainidhi Stalin, he speaks about Sabrisan, who is uh, Stalin's son-in-law, and the kind of money that they've amassed, saying it's even more than their grandfathers. It's led to a big showdown. The DMK is yet to respond to this allegation, to this purported audio clip. Call the DMK files. It is the BJP's big attack on the Stalin clan. A series of corruption allegations levelled by the Tamil Nadu BJP chief K. Anamalai against Chief Minister M. K. Stalin and other DMK leaders has heated up Tamil Nadu politics. Both of them have realised they have made more money over here than they have left over in their lives. And now it's getting to be a problem how to handle it, how to get it, how to get it, how to get it, and what they make them to tell you to keep us. The BJP claims this 27-second clip shows Stalin's trusted aide and state finance minister P. Thiagarajan accepting DMK's corruption, saying Stalin's son and state minister Udayanidhi and his son-in-law Sabri San made over 30,000 crore rupees in just one year. The tape has given ammunition to Anamalai to attack Stalin and he's making the most of it. We are ready to face all their legal challenges. And one thing DMK has to understand is uh, they, they are accountable to the public. In fact, the kind of money that they have made in the last two years, it has to become a talking point in Tamil Nadu. Just yesterday, the finance minister of Tamil Nadu, you must have seen that alleged audio conversation where he himself admits the first family, especially the CM son and the son-in-law, they must have accumulated close to 30,000 crores. This is coming from the finance minister of the state. Other BJP leaders have also launched a scathing attack on the DMK. Basically, Thayag Rajan is confirming the entire generation was corrupt. They all made money. But these two people are making much more money than their grandfathers have made money. So the entire DMK family is, is only into making money. The DMK so far has remained mum on the charges, but it has dragged Anamalai into a legal battle, filing defamation cases against him. The Saffron Party leader has refused to apologise and stands by his accusations. Anamalai says there is no question of him tendering any apology or paying any damages because he sticks by what he said and he sticks by the charges that he's levelled against the DMK leaders. He also accused the DMK, saying that the strategy of sending him legal notices was nothing but an attempt to muscle his voice. He also, of course, issued dire warning to the DMK that if they indeed want to go ahead with the legal action, then they can do so at their own risk. With Shilpa Nair in Bengaluru and Pramod Madhav in Chennai, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, even as the DMK files has kicked off this political storm in Tamil Nadu, I want to get to this conversation that I had a few hours ago with the Tamil Nadu BJP chief, K. Anamalai. Here's what he has to say about the allegations he's levelled and the legal notices that he's been issued by the DMK. About six days ago, you had held a press conference in which you had alleged that Udainidhi has earned uh, and there's corruption to the tune of 2,000 plus crores. Now there's an audio tape allegedly of the Tamil Nadu finance minister talking about Udainidhi earning 30,000 crores plus. What's your reaction to this alleged audio tape first? Uh, Madam, uh, uh, for, uh, for a person like me, it is not very shocking because we know the scale and extent of corruption in Tamil Nadu. And for uh, uh, brothers and sisters across India, it will be a big shock. How can somebody make 30,000 crore? A uh, first family in about two years. That too, they came to power only now. Uh, but but I'll, I'll take a minute to explain, madam. In our sure. uh, DMK files exposed, more than the assets. Assets are okay, madam. We have mentioned about uh, they won 5,000 5, crore, somebody 2,000 crore. That's fine, madam. But the more important point that we raised in the DMK files is how the money laundering that happens with the DMK first family in a big scale 
how they use shell companies across the world to take money outside from Tamil Nadu again bring that back into Tamil Nadu as a legal source of income. Mm. So we have we have named two companies. One is a Noble Steel, which our honourable Chief Minister when he visited Dubai, he signed an agreement for thousand crore. So we have released two documents to say the Chief Minister's son Udayanidhi Stalin was a director of Noble Steel in two thousand and nine. And uh, Udayanidhi Stalin ji's close friend Anbil Poyamali, who is our education minister, was also a director of the same company in 2016. Both mysteriously resigned from the company. One more DMK MP, MP called M M Abdullah is also a director promoter of the company. And with that company, they signed an agreement for thousand crore, and the money hasn't come. So we are we are giving examples how shell company. The second is the the CM Sanandla Sabrishan, how he runs a company in UK. In the same address, they have. Company in which his co-director is a partner in Saint George's Bank, which in turn is linked to one company called Westpac, which is involved in money laundering in African countries mostly, and the Australian uh, uh, financial regulators have flagged off Westpac for doing a lot of money laundering in different parts of the world. So they run a very sophisticated a criminal syndicate. The okay. money they make in Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu is tightly controlled at the first time level. A group of auditors they vet every single document, they go through tender. And none of the ministers can issue any tenders on their own, and the money is collected by the first family. Then the money goes out of the country; it comes comes back into the country, where the same money goes into Red Jane movies. But Uday Nidhi Stalin is promoter of that company, which produ- which has produced 60 percent of Tamil movies, which has released 60 percent of Tamil movies after DMK okay. has come to power. They There control the theatre, points. they control the production. Sure, there are some points, uh, uh, Namalai, which uh, Odhinidhi Stalin has tried to counter in the legal notice that he sent across to you. I'm sure you've read it. But one of the issues that you've raised with regards to Noble Steels, what he said essentially is that I've never been a director of Noble Steels. You've mentioned the ROC, which you show in the DMK files, which you showed in your press conference. The ROC says Noble Promoters Private Limited. Odhinidhi is saying you yourself have said it's Noble Promoters. How can you now claim it's Noble Steels? So he's alleging that there's no corruption or no question of his link to. This company, oh, madam, it is one corporation. The names are Noble Alloy and Ferrous is one company. Noble Steel is one company. Noble Bricks is one company. Noble Promoters is one company. So the name can change depending on the transaction you make inside Tamil Nadu. The original promoter of the company, if you look at it, the gentleman, is also the same promoter in all of the company which comes in Noble Group. It's just a frivolous charge that is trying to make in the defamation notice, saying you mentioned orange, but that orange is bright uh, orange in color. But this orange is little uh, uh, less orange in color. I belong to this orange, so mm. it is just a tactical thing is doing. But the whole idea we are trying to make is the noble corporation in which one promoter is there, and these guys are partners in different group entities. And end of the day, this company is trying to come into Tamil Nadu, where a money which they claim is a legal money, white money is trying to come into Tamil Nadu, which will counter, madam. So all they have to say is what is the link they have to noble steel. What why one of the Rajya Sabha MP M M Abdullah is still a promoter in Noble Steel, and why Anbil Mahesh? Why did they resign? So why was he a director in the first place? Who wanted him to be a director? Why was he a director for a couple of months? Then he resigned abruptly. So these are the answers. Moment you get the answers for this, then you get the complete picture of their operation. And not only that, but uh, again the Savarishan, Sanilla of uh, the Rusi M K Stalin, we have made a very specific allegation linking him to one person, where both of them are board directors in a UK company. And this guy is part of one money laundering uh, firm, which is flagged by many financial regulators. So they have to answer it. Madam. On top of it, the first question you asked, the Tamil Nadu Finance Minister, of the cuff remark uh, uh, even makes that uh, more than the thirty thousand crore. What is more interesting, if you listen to the audio tape, he says, these guys are making more money in a year, in a month year, yeah. than what their grandfather made in a lifetime. Grandfather meaning it is Kalinger Karnanidhi. True. What he made in the lifetime, Karnanidhi. Himself, we know circumvention, scientific corruption. We know the extent of their money. So he says, in one month, one year, they are making the money what he made in a lifetime. So these are all very, not very simple charges, man. Very serious charges. Forty-two hours later, we don't have a question. DMK had to respond. PTR had to respond. Uh, Udayan is Stalin had to respond. The the Anil Nair to respond. So they believe they can do a media silence, media blackout in Tamil Nadu. They own about four channels. They own about three newspapers. they think they they can they cannot talk and people forget it but we believe corruption will be the single biggest issue in tamil nadu which has to be debated at the public forum madam
You know, as far as this alleged audio tape is concerned, I understand that there's not been any coverage on this uh, in the Tamil media, for starters. Secondly, also, you know, you mentioned that in the audio tape, there's a talk of Udenidhi Stalin, there's talk of Sabrishan, there's talk of their grandfather as well, Kalanyar Karananadi. According to you, Anamalai, and based on, you know, the BJP's DMK files, how deep-rooted is the graft? How much corruption are we talking about when we look at the entire family, when we look at Stalin's entire family? But in Tamil Nadu, it is a straight, straight 30%. You do anything, uh, any promotion, it is straight 30%. That's why the industries don't come to Tamil Nadu much. They have started going away to different parts of the country. And we don't have a single window mechanism for clearance. Every single thing, you got to pay money at every single step. It's so 30% commission, Archie, you're saying in Tamil Nadu? It, it's a 30% commission, Archie, madam. On top of it, on top of it, we have to understand it's very scientific corruption. What they do is to put a tender of a road, they inflate the cost of the road by 30%. If the road cost is 100, the tender will be issued for 130. And somebody takes a tender for 130, so he can he can happily pay 30% as commission because the cost of the road itself is inflated. Then for mm -hmm. clearing the bill, they take another 4.5%. That to Tasmak, which makes about 44,000 crore, is the single biggest revenue earner for the government of Tamil Nadu, along with commercial tax, probably the number two earning in Tamil Nadu. And Tasmak, again, the liquor industries are owned by DMK. I made very specific allegation, Madam, King's company, which, which makes bulk of the liquor is owned by Mr. T.R. Balu. Then we have, we have linked Kanimali Karnanadi Madam to one company. We have mm. linked to all the top companies which manufactures liquor. And there is an allegation in Tamil Nadu, part of the liquor is sold as loose. If you go to Taskmark, you want a bill. You get an authorized liquor by which the tax is paid. You don't want a bill. Taskmark government of Tamil Nadu sells liquor without bill, which doesn't get into the taxation net, which comes to you without bill. So 100 rupees you sell that liquor, all 100 rupees goes to that company, no tax. So anybody goes to Tasma, first thing the guy will ask you, Tamil Nadu is whether you want a bill, you don't want a bill. How many people mm. will take a bill? Hardly 20% will take a bill. 80% will say, don't want a bill. So it is very deep rooted. But unfortunately, nobody talks about it. So it's like a free money that is flowing. And more important, actually, Madam, is the money that comes in, again, comes back to during elections. And a person who wants to fight, who wants to bring some change, Against them, they will pay 3,000 rupees per vote. How will that person win? 5,000 rupees per vote. How will that person win? That is why a, a, a month back I mentioned, I will fight a clean, elect, clean election in my lifetime. I said, this is my guarantee to Tamil Nadu. You will not see me going beyond the ceiling limit, expense limit. I will never pay a single rupee to any of the voter in my lifetime because this is my commitment to you as a candidate, if at all the party proposes me as a candidate. Now, Tamil Nadu deep rooted. You make money, you mm. bring the money against candidate, you pay 5,000 rupees per vote. How can normal people win an election, go and sit in assemblies and parliament? So, what happens? It becomes controlled by family. Over the last 10 years, you made a lot of money, you made illegal money, you started pay, bribing the voters, then only a certain candidates will win. They come and sit in assembly. It has become more like clubhouse. The Tamil Nadu legislative assembly is controlled by about 14 families because that family is in the third generation now. It became more like a clubhouse. What democracy is there, madam? Third generation people going and sitting. You win election based on votes. A normal middle class person cannot aspire to be an elected MLA. They go and sit in uh, legislative assembly. They kids. It's people mandate. What people mandate? You bring for you pay five thousand rupees for one vote. You win the election. You call the, and the assembly passes a resolution after resolution. Calling it's not people mandate. It's fourteen family which controls Tamil Nadu for three generations. It could be K. Neruji in Trichy, it could be somebody in Salem, you're it could be somebody in Pondutu. But then you're alleging that there's no democracy in Tamil Nadu at all. Democracy is not there simply because corruption. It's a vicious cycle. Because of corruption, a lot of money. A lot of money goes back to bribing voters. Okay. And you get the same candidate elected. It's like a vicious cycle. How will the electoral change happen in Tamil Nadu, madam? That is why I've become very aggressive over the last two, three months. So we all have come with a vision to bring Modi's governance to Tamil Nadu. I am seeing you this vicious also, cycle for the last two years. You also, in the DMK files expose, Annamal, I spoke about the luxurious lifestyle uh, of many of these DMK leaders, of Stalin's family members. You referred to Louis Vuitton so shoes, Gucci, Salvatore Ferragamo belt and whatnot. Inevitably, the DMK's counter to that is always referring to the watch that you wear, the Rafale watch. What's your response to that? For well, the Rafael watch I wear, I've given the bill, I've told them which which uh, which uh, which outlet sold it, who purchased it, I purchased from whom, everything is on the website, nmanyanmakkal.com. People can go to the website. On top of it, madam, for the first time what I've done is, 
15 years of my earning, I've put it in the website. 15 years of my bank statements, line by line, 212 pages. 12 years of my credit card, line by line, 196 pages. What I've gone, which hotel I've eaten. As ASP, what is my salary? My bank loan account. I am Lucknow, I studied MBA. I struggled to pay my loan. I took eight years to pay my loan. I put everything. Maybe first time I would say, only out of humility, because to take on DMK is not very easy, man. This is one of the most ugliest political parties in the whole world. They'll come at you like anything. The website contains at least 600 pages of my personal document. 600 pages. I've challenged them. 15 years of my life I've put it. You put, show one paisa we legitimately earned. One paisa. Watchmen have given. I've told where I bought, why I brought, why I'm wearing Rafal. What is the reason for wearing Rafal? I am asking you simple questions. Nobody would disclose their personal life. I know I put a lot of my friends in trouble. And many people have called me, no, 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 my name has come out. And people are calling me. And, and uh, Tamil media, what they're busy doing is how many times I've ordered in Swiggy, how many times I've ordered in Zobato, how many times I've booked tickets online in the last 10 years. This is the Tamil Nadu's prime time story. What Annamali has eaten, how many times he has gone to hotel, pattern of his life. But very, very unfortunate. The idea of putting this, that in the public domain is to tell, I am clean. You come and debate. We will have a debate on corruption now. I am also a public servant for about nine and a half years. So you're also a public servant. Now come, let us debate on corruption. We'll take it okay. up. So the intention is to make sure corruption should be the center political narrative of Tamil market. So that when it happens, a political change will happen. If you don't bring corruption onto the table because your alliance partner will feel uncomfortable, some friend will feel uncomfortable, some political party will feel uncomfortable, when will the change happen in Tamil Nadu, madam? For how long you will keep traveling in the same bus expecting change to happen? So you're up against this deep-rooted corruption, Anamale. You're up against media domination also by these Dravidian parties in Tamil Nadu. My final question to you is, what kind of action do you expect to see on the DMK files on this alleged audio tape, on which, by the way, there's been no reaction from the DMK so far? Madam, I am very, very confident that the Chennai Metro tender that was given when Mr. Stalin was the Deputy Chief Minister, there is a clear case of corruption allegation made against him. And we are taking it to the CBI. We are in the process of preparing the document and filing it. Very soon we'll be filing as an Indian citizen. And I believe if properly investigated, that will link them directly to bribing a French company called Alstom to get that contract in Chennai. Likewise, there are many cases pending against them. In fact, our cases are pending in the Department of Vigilance and Anti-Corruption in Tamil Nadu over the last two years. I just want, honestly, some agency taking it up, honestly going behind them, honestly putting these people behind the block. Honestly, getting going after the money laundering thing that is happening, I'm sure it will come. Only now we have started speaking, only now we are in the thing. But I know I also have to pay a heavy price. It is not that they, they will keep quiet. All kinds of defamation, swords, criminal compliance, FIRs, arrest, and everything they will do. But I, have, I am determined to take the fight to the finish line. And God is there, Almighty is there, Modiji is there. Wherever this leads, let it be the fight. Okay, let's see how this plays out. But your DMK files expose has no doubt become a national talking point. Anamalai, thank you very much for taking the time out and joining us here on India Today. So what really is the DMK files all about? Six days ago when the BJP released this massive uh, group of documents and then held this press conference, they targeted every single member of MK Stalin's family. And here are the allegations they leveled. Watch it. Their political fight has escalated in the legal domain. Without money going in, without uh, shell companies, how is Red Jane movies controlling Tamil Nadu industry today? To the Honorable Chief Minister and to the members of DMK to, to give clarification, to tell our people how exactly this is happening called the DMK files, a compendium of corruption allegations levelled by Tamil Nadu BJP leader K. Annamalai against the DMK chief minister M.K. Stalin and other leaders had met with stiff legal resistance. Earlier, the ruling party shot off a legal notice to the state BJP president seeking rupees 500 crore in damages. The DMK has accused Annamalai of defaming the chief minister and other party leaders with baseless claims about amassing wealth and assets inappropriately. Uday Nidhi Stalin, who is CM's son, was a director of that company in 2009, which he resigned later. 
and Anbil Mayesh Poyamali, who is our education minister, was also a director of Nobel Group, a part of it called Nobel BRICS in 2016, which he resigned subsequently. So this is a point of big concern to us, how the chief minister's son and the first family relative, Anbil Mayesh Poyamali, both are directors of a company, which they resigned subsequently. And that company suspiciously in Dubai talks about 1,000 crore investment coming back into our state. On Wednesday, Udainidi Stalin, the chief minister's son, sent a separate legal notice to Anna Malai in connection with the DMK files. Himself a state minister, he demanded rupees 50 crore in damages and unconditional apology, taking exception to Anna Malai, naming his children in the disputed compendium of accusations. The chief minister's son rejected allegations levelled against him by the BJP leader. Tamil Nadu School Education Minister challenged Anna Malai to prove accusations of him amassing assets worth more than 1,000 crores. But Anna Malai has stood by his accusations. The BJP leader has refused to take down the controversial DMK files clip and asserted that he is ready for the legal battle ahead. Your report, India Today. I'm slipping into a short break here on 6 p.m. Prime. Coming up on the other side, all the updates coming in on the Pooch terror attack in which we've lost five of our Javans. The hunt continues for the terrorists, the perpetrators of that attack. Details coming up in just a bit. As state of war Karnataka begins, a reminder, who is the true number one? The five big voices speak to us before all the others. From Chief Minister Bomai to Chief Challenger Siddharamaya, from old war horse Yadurappa to muscle man DK Shivakumar and kingmaker Kumara Swami. When it's Karnataka, there's no competition. India's number one election channel. The real crime versus the recreation. Five days after the shooting of Atik Ahmed and his brother Ashraf, the UP police attempted to recreate the whole 22-second sequence where three shooters fired 18 bullets at Atik and Ashraf. Body doubles for Atik and Ashraf were brought in. A sea of security was deployed along with a forensic team. All preparations were made to make the crime scene look as authentic as possible. And finally, three men posing as shooters were brought in. The Atik Ashraf body doubles then pretend to speak to the media. Suddenly from the left, images we're so familiar with now, a man emerges and shoots the Atik dummy in the head. Atik and Ashraf's body doubles fall to the ground and as the shooters attack, they then surrender. The exact way the shooters surrendered, the angle from which they shot, their bike on the ground, every moment of the Atik shooting recreated to the T. You can see in the visuals that what has happened, you know, the scene has been recreated exactly like what it happened that night. You can see that these three people imposing as, uh, you know, the gangsters are shooting. Uh, the police will now gun them down. The police will now take them down as exactly it happened that night. Sources have told India today that the police are likely to conduct a narco test of the attackers after permission from the court, even as their questioning continues by the police. Sources tell India today that the shooters wanted to carry out the attack a day before, on April the 14th, but chickened out after seeing massive police arrangements. Sunny Singh, who's been linked to the Surinder Bhati gang, reportedly is the mastermind of the shooting. The assailants are being interrogated about the motive behind the shooting of Atik and his brother, how they got their hands on weapons that cost 7 lakh rupees each. They're also being grilled on how they knew Atik's location and also why they raised Jai Shri Ram slogans. 
Finally, the police have asked the shooters why they didn't carry their mobile phones with them when they carried out the attack. With Simar Chavla in Prayagraj, UP, you will report India Today. Tragic news that came in yesterday of five of our Jawans dying in a terror attack in Poonch. Let's round up for you all the developments since the investigation and the hunt for the terrorists. The Jammu and Kashmir DGP Dilbag Singh along with the National Investigation Agency teams reached the terror spot to investigate. A forensic team also reached the spot to collect initial details and evidence of the site in which five soldiers lost their lives. According to the initial information, terrorists reportedly used IEDs and sticky bombs to attack soldiers. They targeted the truck carrying soldiers at a time when visibility was low due to rainfall. According to authorities, terrorists used Pakistani-occupied Kashmir to infiltrate into India. Sources have told us that overground workers helped terrorists living in POK and working for Pakistani-based terror groups. Reportedly, Jesh-based terror group People's Anti-Fascist Front has claimed responsibility for the Poonch attack. Officials suspect four terrorists were involved in the incident. So as we speak, there is an operation underway in the forests of Poonch to find the five to seven odd terrorists who were involved in this terror strike. But let's get you our next report and all the details that have come in so far on this dastardly terror strike. A day after a terror attack killed five army jawans in Rajori, a hunt is on for the terrorists behind the strike. Intelligence sources tell India today that five terrorists were involved in the attack. Sources say three of them were foreigners and two were locals. The sources say the terrorists allegedly infiltrated from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. The terror strike was aimed to create sensation ahead of the G20 meetings planned to be held in Jammu and Kashmir. Sources say the army has deployed multiple special forces team, drones and surveillance helicopters to carry out search operations in the area. An NIA team visited the attack spot along with the Jammu and Kashmir DGP Dilbag Singh. An eight-member forensic team also accompanied the NIA team. The soldiers were killed as the vehicle caught fire after 50 rounds of bullets were fired by unidentified terrorists. Investigation agencies also suspect the use of IEDs and sticky bombs in the attack. Meanwhile, a political war has erupted over the attack. Intelligence failure, यहाँ उनकी security की failure है, क्योंकि वो border के बहुत नजदीक है, बहुत करीब वो इलाका है, तो इससे इसका बचाव देनी चाहिए। जब सेना सुरक्षित नहीं है, तो regular police और वहाँ के citizen सिर्फ के बारे में क्या कहा जा सकता है? मैं इतना ही कह सकता हूँ कि अनबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर और नए होम मिनिस्टर election ही में ना बेहतर हैं, governance को improve करें। the terror attack in Rajori comes ahead of Pakistan Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto's visit to India on May 4 and 5th to attend the Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting in Goa. Pure Report, India Today.
Let me take this across to Sunil Ji Bhatt, who's joining us live from Poonch. He has, in fact, visited also the site where the attack took place. Sunil Ji, you've been tracking the latest that's been coming in on the story. Any leads, really, that the authorities have gotten on these terrorists? We understand there were about seven of them. Most of them were foreign terrorists, but they were aided by locals. Uh, well, Akshita, investigations are at a preliminary stage right now and that is why, you know, uh, there has not been any official soundbite yet from any official, either from the Jammu and Kashmir police or from the Indian Army. Yesterday, uh, Indian Army issued a statement in which uh, uh, they confirmed that it was a terror attack that took place uh, earlier afternoon yesterday. And uh, now investigations are taking place and I has also joined uh, this probe, but uh, what are so Sources are telling us that uh, there, uh, there is a possibility that uh, uh, five terrorists could have carried out this uh, terror attack. However, it's a matter of investigation. And uh, what we have also learned from our sources is that uh, AK-47 rifles uh, were used by these terrorists. And uh, uh, there were a couple of local terrorists also involved in this dastardly uh, terror attack. But... Um, uh, as I have been saying all through the day today that an intense search operation is on in the forest belt of Rajuri as well as Punch. Uh, whether it's the Indian Army, JNK police or the paramilitary forces, uh, the security agencies are working in close coordination to ensure that this time uh, the terrorists who carried out this attack uh, you know, don't manage to escape from this uh, area. Because right. in the recent past we have seen that uh, the terror attacks that took place in the twin border districts of Rajuri and Punch, terrorists managed to give a slip to the security forces, uh, which is very worrisome. And that is why yes. a high alert has been sounded across the length and breadth of Jammu and Kashmir, particularly okay. in view of the all-important uh, G20 uh, summit-related event that And, you know, sources did tell us that this was an attempt to kind of take attention away from the G20 meet. Thanks, Sunilji, for getting us that update. Stay safe there. Uh, the hunter, Sunilji tells us, is underway to find those terrorists. I'm slipping into a short break here on 6 p.m. Prime. On the other side, as promised, we'll be getting you every update that's come in in the Atik Ahmed story. The hunt continues for his wife, Shaista Parveen. The speculation she could surrender. Artificial intelligence has been the buzzword for a while now. With the emergence of AI, we are moving towards a future where machines can learn, reason and solve problems independently, much like humans. AI tools and bots are becoming more prevalent and their uses are expanding from virtual assistants that help us navigate our daily lives to AI-generated content. So from ChatGPT, Bart to Bing AI and now Snapchat's launched my AI. It is becoming a billion dollar race. Meanwhile, generative chatbots have emerged as a user's best friend on the internet. Giving proper conversation-like answers, being more solution-oriented than ever, being available 24 into 7, unlike human helplines, and having the entire internet open to them for historical research. And as seen more recently, ChatGPT also tries to give love, marriage and good life advice as well. AI-powered voice assistants such as Apple's Siri and Amazon's Alexa have been popular household names too. These voice assistants can perform tasks like setting reminders, scheduling appointments and even controlling smart home devices all through voice commands. Alexa, play all is well. Alexa makes smart home easier. As these voice assistants become more sophisticated, they can also make recommendations based on our preferences and behaviors. But it is not just consumers who are benefiting from AI tools and bots. Big tech companies are investing heavily in generative AI bots, which are designed to create content such as news articles or social media posts without human intervention. They are massively cost-effective as well. 
or like Snap's newly made public AI bot, My AI will help you draft messages for your friends, serve through awkward conversations, and will also snap back at you with pictures. However, the rise of AI tools and bots has also raised concerns about privacy and security. Critics worry about the potential misuse of AI tools and bots and the possibility of data breaches. AI tools like ChatGPT have also raised very real fears of high-tech plagiarism. The rise of artificial intelligence tools and bots is definitely changing the way we live and work. From providing customer support to generating content, these tools can help us be more productive and efficient. They can also be entertaining, just as Snapchat's newly launched Ares, which is supposed to elevate your shopping experience to AI and AR. But the argument regarding safety and security largely remain. The future of AI is more than exciting, definitely more than exciting, and we're only scratching the surface of its potential. So the right thing to do here is to do it safely and responsibly. Welcome back. The hunt continues for Atik Ahmed's wife, Shaista Parveen, as well as Gurdu Muslim, both wanted in the Umesh Pal murder case. Speculation is rife right now that Shaista Parveen, who's been in hiding, absconding for 50 days and counting, could just surrender. He ran his crime syndicate from Gujarat Sabarmati Jail, issuing threat messages, extorting businesses, in a free run from inside the prison. Outside, he charged gunda tax from the wealthy to fund his election campaigns. As investigations into the Atik Ahmed saga progress, more skeletons tumble out of the slain Don's closet. According to case files accessed by India Today, this is the room where Atik Ahmed and his henchmen tortured a key murder witness Umesh Pal, after abducting him in 2006. The torture chamber and the building bear testimony to the gangster's creepy lifestyle. The location I'm standing at is very interesting and very important because this is the same location where Umesh Pal was captured, kidnapped and tortured for a few days in 2006. I'm not saying this, this is the line which has been written in the FIR which was registered by Umesh Pal in 2007. Now, this is the room where he was brought in 2006 and there was pressure which was being created on him to not be the witness in Umesh, in Raju Pal case. With speculations abuzz about the surrender of Atik Ahmed's widow, Shaista Parveen, her lawyer has issued clarification that no such process is formally underway. हमारी तरफ से तो कोई भी सरेंडर एप्लीकेशन न्यायालय में दाखिल नहीं है जिस पे कोई रिपोर्ट सीजीएम साहब ने मंगाया हो तो ये अफवाहें उड़ रही हैं ये अफवाहें हैं सरेंडर की कोई भी ऐसी जो है बात आई नहीं है। The woman on the most wanted list in Uttar Pradesh carries a reward of 50,000 rupees for information leading to her capture. Meantime, trouble has also mounted for Khan Shalat Hanif. The 61-year-old former lawyer of Atik Ahmed, already in jail in connection with the abduction of Umesh Pal, Hanif now named a suspect in Umesh Pal's murder as well. Umesh Pal was a witness in the 2005 murder case of BSP MLA Raju Pal. Paul details of Asad Ahmed, the slain Don's son killed in a police shootout, reveals his father sent him the target's pictures through Hanif barely four days before Umesh Pal's murder in February. Police is likely to question the jail lawyer soon. The darker side of the Don's life and the death. Investigations into Atik Ahmed's murder and his criminal empire far from over. With Simar Chavla, Bureau Report, India Today. 
That's all we've time for in this edition of 6 p.m. Prime. Thanks very much for tuning in. Coming up on the other side, Nikhil Nas joins you with all the updates and all the action from the IPL. Vampires, fantasy or reality? One question that started off with curiosity and now has taken a rather rhetorical turn. However, one thing that is for sure is that fans love watching vampire related web series or films. Bringing the same is Tanya Maniktala with our very own Indian version supernatural mystery series title Tooth Pari. Directed by Pratim Das Gupta, the web show will also showcase an impossible love story between Tanya's character and a dentist, essayed by Shantanu Maheshwari. A suitable boy actress looks every bit promising as a vampire, and the concept has alone piqued fans' interest. There are a couple of other ladies from global cinema who have played a vampire, and though it was scary, but were loved for their on-screen characters. If you heard. When we talk about vampire-based shows, we just cannot miss the teen favorite, The Vampire Diaries. The one vampire who could tame even Claus, Caroline Forbes, played by Candace King. Please save her life. She was quite an overachiever and a charmer with several feathers in her hat, including Miss Mystic Falls, head of the cheerleading team, and being a valedictorian. Obviously. Come on. Another fan favorite, Lady Vampire, from the same show was Catherine, played by Nina Dobrev, who also happened to have a human doppelganger. How is this possible? Unlike. <laughs> this is the price of development. This is the prize of human greed. Comfort at the cost of their homes. Don't ignore the wildlife SOS. Human versus wild. Co-powered by Max Life Insurance. You are the difference. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's play. You're watching Lights, Camera and Cricket with me, Nikhil Nas. Now, IPL matches are coming in thick and fast. And in today's IPL action, the Chennai Super Kings will take on the Sunrisers Hyderabad at the Chepok. Both teams have lost their previous matches and are looking to return to winning ways. But 